Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast, and we are those two Warp Brothers. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show, how are you? I'm all right, boss. I'm all right. Tuesday so before we get started, though, um, had a nice little event that went on in your neck of the woods uh, th- this past weekend, I guess stemming from Thursday of last week all the way through the weekend, the NFL Draft. Did you participate in any of that? Did that happen here? I I I heard something about it, but uh no, I watched it on TV. I didn't go down there. I'm not a like I told you, if I'm not gonna go to a movie theater, I doubt if I'm gonna go to a crowded with there's a hundreds of thousands of people there. Hey, I feel you. I feel you. I, I know that it set viewer records across the board, not just people down there, but watching it on TV, you know, all that good stuff. So, you know. Good for Kansas City. Good for Kansas City. Just because just just I'm not a Chiefs fan doesn't mean I don't root for my city, you know? Right. They so, did the thing. They did yeah. the thing. Um, it was kind of funny because I had a, a buddy of mine posted on Facebook. He was like, attention visitors to Kansas City. It, it, it's like when your dad's coming home and all of a sudden your mom said you better clean up the house before the guests arrive type of thing. Kansas City doesn't always look like this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they 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 put on a nice front for everybody, but yeah, hey, they did a good job. It you, was, yeah, it was you do what cool. you got to do. It was nice to be the center of attention for three days in the NFL, and it was nice to to go out there and flex the Super Bowl trophies in front of everybody. That was kind of cool, and you know we're now hated, so it is what it is. Well, everybody who's a champ, especially a multiple time champ. You're going to be on that hated list. So, oh yeah, and this is where I'm at as a Chiefs fan because I know we're not going to keep this on football, but I, I've had so many dog years growing up where we just we get so far and get kicked in the teeth. That now that we've won two in the last four years, been to three in the last four years, from now to the day I right, but now to the day I die, I'm playing with house money. So I really, you know, I'm I'm not going to be sad, you know, if they lose, you know what I mean? It just I'm playing with house money. Well, I mean, and 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 I'm not saying that we are on the Chiefs level right now, but the Chiefs and the Raiders have always been mirror images of each other. You know, in the 60s and 70s, we were that team. In the 80s and 90s, y'all became that team under Marty and then in the 2000s, y'all ascended to that next level winning those championships. So I get that. You're I wouldn't to... say the 80s, but the 90s, yes. Well, yeah. What, Schottenheimer got hired in, what, 88? Something like that? 89? Yeah, 80, uh, 89, I want to say. 88, I'm going to say that but... that's when y'all turned it around, though, because y'all consistently were a playoff team. and had Carl Starting Peterson... in 1989, yeah. Had Carl Peterson decided to go for championships instead of attendance, y'all might have another one in y'all's pocket. Mm, I don't know. I mean, because we've had plenty of opportunities, you know, and we we never did have the quarterback. That was a position that we were missing. And even when we did have the quarterback, which was Joe Montana, the, the dude was over the hill. We, we, we got lucky with the two games that we won. But, you know, it is what it is. We never had the guy. We have the guy that everybody wants right now. Yeah, that's that is the one thing the knock on Kansas City for the longest. They never drafted a good quarterback. They get free agent quarterbacks. Y'all had that run where y'all got what three in a row San Francisco quarterbacks. Yep, Montana, Bono, then Gerback. And later yeah. on we had Alex Smith. Yeah. Who wasn't know, bad. So. Wasn't bad, but he's not gonna win you a Super Bowl. No. But he got a ring out of it. No, he didn't. Oh, I thought uh, 
the team decided to give him a ring because of oh, uh, all his well, uh, commitment. Maybe they maybe they did, but he wasn't. Yeah, because I know he was already sent to Washington, but um, maybe they felt bad because his his leg was all busted up. <laughs> and busted is an understatement. All right, we're going to get away from sports. I want to talk about calming strategies for us adults because we always have them days where we uh, uh, either want to bust somebody's head or we want to just like take somebody out. Just one of them days where people get under your skin. They could say the same thing three days in a row. That third day will set you off. You ever had days like that? Nope. That's a lie, folks. <laughs> Just talking to you before the show, I already know. Um, of course, we all have those days. Yeah, so um, there's... um. I want to say I got about 15-ish or 20 different uh, strategies that I want to mention and I just kind of want your input about it. And if you've got something, you know, I want you to, you know, throw it out there as well. All right. Now, not in any particular order. Um, this one, everybody can do deep breathing, you know, just in out. Now, have you ever tried that? And do you think that would even work for you? I have to. Yes, I've done that. But you have to do that away from whatever is annoying you. Mm, that's a good that's a good thing. Good thing to mention, because um, whatever is uh, getting to you in some situations, you have to get away from Im immediately. And, uh, and we'll talk about situations when you I can't. Would get away with it. I would definitely say number one, I have all these and I don't know what they are. You just missed the first one, but number one at the top of the list is to remove yourself from said situation. Yes. Now, but yes, uh, breathing in and out, that's actually, it does help. Um, yeah. And, 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 and when I say deep breathing, it's, it's slow and controlled because you want to concentrate on the breathing because that's going to have you not concentrate on the issue at hand. Yes. And it has some physiological uh, health benefits as well. You know, it's going to lower your blood pressure, calm your heart, you know, that type of thing. Cause I normally when you say, get heated, all those things boil up. I do want to say before we go any further than this for everybody watching at home, I am not a doctor. I play one on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, deep breathing. Doogie Hauser. Uh, the reverse. I'm old. <laughs> Dougie Hauser. This one I ran across in an uh, article. Name your feelings. So this is some of that new age stuff, I guess. Name your feelings. So, um, That's some bullshit. Yeah, because if you're angry, you, you know you're angry. If you're confused, if you're upset, you know whatever the word is. Just naming it um, to me, and this is just me, it, it's not going to help. Oh, he pissed me no. off. I'm so angry. That's not right. going to make me not angry. That's automatically going to be going off in your head, but you already know the reason why you're angry. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's... Yeah, Those damn that, Chiefs we, won the Super Bowl again. No. Right. That's some new wave. Yeah. Personally, I would scratch that one off the list. But hey, if you need to use it, use it. Yeah, yeah, what works for one may not work for another. I get that. This one, this third one, really works for me. Listening to music. And the type of music will depend on the type of situation. But more often than not, the more relaxing the music, uh, again, depending on the situation, it's, it, it's really good for me to just sit down, put my headphones on or my earbuds in and and, and just sit there, you know, listen to some music. Yeah, that that's good. I would say that's that's more or less um, after the situation has happened, you have removed yourself from said situation, and now you are in your own space. Yeah, 
because you know somebody's taking you off you're not immediately gonna put on some headphones and start jamming because that's probably not gonna help much now this could go hand in hand with music nature sounds yeah i could see I, that i know Never a lot of it. people and and when i say calming strategies you may not be angry you just might be anxious uh, I know a lot of people that have trouble sleeping because of That's anxiety. True. And and there are YouTube channels that specifically have nature sounds or other kind of sounds, if you choose, that go two, eight, sometimes 24 hours. And you can like, listen to that thing for that long. And um, people do that. I have the never... anxious thing. The anxious thing that makes a lot of sense because in my mind was immediately into being uh, ticked off about something. Yeah, and, but that's and a I, good point because these are They're calming strategies. They worried, can be for anything. stressed out about mm -hmm. things. Okay, yeah, right. I can see. Yes, I could see those laying in, except for the naming it. I don't think that would help. No, I, that to me that's that's something you really really put to a kid. Because that stops them from thinking about whatever they're going through just so they can, you know, talk to you. I don't think yeah. that would work for an adult. Well, well, I mean, I guess it would depend on the mental capacity of said adult, you know. That is true. If you have one with slight mental issues, that might assist them in calming down. This one, this next one, um, I'll tell you why it doesn't work for me, but it works for others. Hold your pet. I have a cat. Sometimes he don't want to be bothered with us pathetic humans. So he's doing his thing. You know, sometimes I'll be able to pet him, but sometimes he's like, get away from me, human. I'm going to go get my food. Yeah, I, I think that's more or less with people that have dogs. Because yeah. I, because now I will say this, because when you talk about being anxious, I do remember being in the office when we had people when we had a, a mascot it was a bulldog a guy brought it in every every day mm -hmm. and and his name was chester and he would walk around from desk to desk but like when you're stressed out about trying to figure out how to cover this or whatever issue he was always there you can be down and just pet him for a, that was very calming so yes i could see that working out oh, okay that's that would be cool um i guess other people have other types of pets too. It's not just a cat and dog thing, but you know, whoever it is out there listening, if you got the pet tarantula, probably don't want to stick your hand in there. Just saying. Maybe. I don't know. Never had a pet tarantula. Had a pet snake. I have a policy on pets. Anything that looks at you as its next meal is not really a pet. All right, well, a tarantula is not going to look at you like you're its next meal. N normal pet snakes are not going to look at you like their next meal. Because unless you are a herpetologist, like most people aren't going to have a 35, 45 foot snake because most snakes don't get that big anyway. I'm on my tangent here. But most snakes can't eat humans anyway because their shoulders are too wide. They can kill you, but they can't eat you. Yeah, either way, you'd be dead, so I just don't want to, you know. I mean, yes, you, you they could, I mean, like the constrictor is a big one, like a boa or a, a reticulated pythons are super aggressive and super mean. They get, they're, they're the longest snake in the world. Anacondas mm -hmm. are the heavy, are the heaviest, but I mean, they could actually wrap around you, but they wouldn't be able to actually consume you because our shoulders aren't like animals where... You know, we don't, we're not on all fours, so our shoulders aren't faced forward. Yeah. We have the broad shoulders, so they, they wouldn't be able to get all the way around. It would, you would rip them open before they could finish you off. That's good to know. But next time I'm faced with a snake, that's right. And here's another tip if you, if you were, if you did have a pet snake and that snake was coiled around you, take it in. If you can get into the shower, turn on cold water. It will release. Hmm. You know that from experience or? Uh... A lot of studying. And yes, I, I've had pet snakes. So, okay. yeah. I like that. Um, This next one. This is a good one. Call a friend. Yes, that works. 
Yes. To get your mind off of things or talk about it if you wish. It just it depends you, on the friend too. You can discuss where to bury the body. Yeah. Get get an alibi for one another. Yeah. Hey, I was at your house Saturday night. Say it with me. I was at your house. <laughs> you were at my house Saturday night. I don't know what happened to them people now. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, it was, if you're smart, and I'm going to let y'all know, you don't want to bury the body. Put the body in the bathtub. Get some Drano. I'm kidding. That don't work. I'm, that, that don't I, work. I know. I know. I know. I'm just kidding. So I've read it doesn't work. <laughs> no, but seriously though, because you know we're being serious, kids. Call a friend, and you know your friends better than anybody. You know that one that will give you advice when you need it, and you know that one that will just listen to what you have to say if you just want to vent. And some of those friends could be one and the same. And if they're your friend, and you can let them know up front which one you want. Um. I'm one of those people when it comes to my friends, I will always tell you what you need to know instead of what you want to hear. And to me, those are the kind of friends that um, you really need because they'll keep you straight no matter what. I always ask, if somebody comes to me like that, I ask, do you want, you want me to just, like you said, you want me just to be here as a sounding board or would you want my opinion on said issue? Right. And then I let them dictate the conversation from there. Because even when they say they just want to vent, pretty soon they're going to want your feedback. That is also true. Now, the next one, it says lay down with eyes closed. I don't know if that's a sleep kind of thing or just a relaxation technique. Um, to me, if I'm kind of anxious or not calm laying down is the last thing i want to do again what works for somebody may not work for somebody else that's one that i probably wouldn't wouldn't do there i don't think i would either especially if i was anxious because then all i'm doing is closing my eyes thinking about why i'm anxious mm -hmm. yep i've been there done that uh one that particularly struck me and i didn't even think about it Look at photos. As a photographer, I like that because, you know, when I look at some of my photos, I completely get lost in the photo itself. Uh, for most people, they'll think about where they were when they took it or uh, who all's in it, if there's people in it. Uh, for somebody like me, I'll also, because I'm, I'm that dude, I... I might look at it and figure out uh, how to crop it, reangle it, something like that. Hey, I haven't posted this one. I'll post it on social media, something like that. Whatever it would be, it would get me off of the subject of where my head was at. And, and I'll just, you know, look at the photos. And I take a lot of photos because, um, and this is just me, but most most people that have dabbled in photography know Almost every 10 pictures you take, only one of them is any good. So I, I get to weeding out stuff while I'm looking. And before I know it, 10, 20, 30 minutes have passed. I've gone through pictures and I haven't even thought about, you know, what I was initially thinking about. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I've never done that. So yeah. maybe I'll try it next time. Yeah. Um, uh, Pull out a family photo album. Look at the kids. Um, look at a vacation that y'all went on. Um, and something like that. And, and just reflect on, on all that. Now, the next one I've never done. Do tapping. And I guess that's where you just, you know, tap or tap or uh, just some kind of just tap your body. I don't, again, I've never done it. So I don't know how that would help other than you're physically tapping yourself. So you take your mind off of it. The only time that works is when I was tapping the other person that made me angry. 
that's the only time that ever made me feel better. I don't so, think they meant tapping. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's that's the only time that, it ever made me feel better. That could be what they meant. But um <clears throat> some have to have this this is a beautiful thank you show. This is a beautiful spot in the uh podcast where I'm just gonna tell everybody, hey, if you agree with show and that's the kind of tapping that you think they meant, drop me a line. L leave me an email. We are at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. And then and then when you're in jujitsu, you make them tap. See, so they tap themselves. See, so that that works so, too. So it's a true double tap. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <clears throat> now the next one I've done often because I like to draw and stuff. It's doodling. Especially if I've got, you know, a pencil or pen and some paper nearby or something just, just, just to write on. I find myself doodling all the time. You know, and sometimes it'll be a full-blown sketch. Um, I could see that working. Yeah, it, it definitely takes my mind off of it. I like to do my artwork. I can see that working. Um, But that would be a, an anxious nervousness type of response. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I'm angry at somebody, the last thing I'm going to do is pull out a pen and pad and start to draw and that's how the Incredible Hulk was invented. The guy was pissed uh, off. Turn in this green monster and kick your ass. Exactly. Now, the next one I've not done because I can't do it. It's knit or crochet. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm not creative like that. I can't knit, cross stitch, crochet or anything like that. So I can't speak on it. I, I, it, it it's coming from the same place as other art like doodling and i i so i can yeah that all lumps work. into the same category yeah you know, it could be putting model cars together it could be uh carpentry you know that type of thing putting a puzzle together you know oh yeah something like that just a, another form to take your uh your mind off of whatever is bothering you yes um say an affirmation this is another one of those self-help kind of things. I've never looked in the mirror and said to myself, you are strong. You are amazing. I I can't do that. It, that's not me. But again, it might work for somebody else. You are smart. You is important. Uh <laughs> I could do that all day long to somebody else, but I can't do it to myself. You do it to yourself and you just don't realize you do it to yourself. When you're running, you're giving yourself affirmations to keep going. I can see that. So you do it, but I'm with you on the case of if I am ticked off or anxious, I ain't going. You got this. Calm down. You don't need to go to jail. Those are my affirmations. You don't look good in orange. That's true. Um, you don't want to prove metal, yourself in the yard every day. The only metal bracelets I want are sterling silver. I not down <laughs> with the nickel plated metal. Um, right. Now, there's another one on here. I kind of like it. Uh, I've never done it. But journaling, some people like to write about the things that tick them off or confuse them or upset them. Um, I like to write, but I've never written about anything that has happened to me. So uh, I'd be curious to know what somebody's standpoint is from, from that. I've journaled. Have you? It works. Have, it does. Okay. It helps. It helps v get that stuff on paper, you know, uh, put it out in the universe type of thing. I like that. But the thing is, no one would see it unless you run it to show it's somebody. Not, it's not meant for anybody else to see. Okay. So it's kind of like you're having a conversation with yourself. That makes sense. That makes sense. I can at least I can that's that. how I. That's kind of how I do it. You know, that's kind of, 
and I don't do it very often, but I mean, you know, there have been times when, especially last year, when I was struggling really bad last year, I did a lot of journaling and it was just, this is how I am today. This is why I miss you, mom, that type of thing. You know, wish you were here, blah, blah, blah. When you're angry, because, you know, those all those stages of grief are for real. And I always thought it was bullshit. You know, I've lost people in my life. Don't get me wrong. But, it, you know, there's a difference when it's your mother, I guess. At least it was yeah, for me. It I was. mean, because I've lost I bought, I've lost both my father and my mother. Uh, but yeah, it, it was it's different. just something about <laughs> it's different. It hits harder. And, you it know, really I was does. her only kid. You know, I was her only son. So it was just we had that special bond type of thing. You know, I, everybody, everybody does. And you're wrong. I'm just talking about myself personally. Mm -hmm. So like, but I always thought those stages of grief was crap until you're actually going through those stages of grief. And they don't stop. I didn't necessarily think it was crap. I was just like, yeah, that won't happen to me until it happened to me. Yeah. So. And so, you know, so last year, yeah, I journaled. I journaled a lot. Uh, God bless my sister because she she was in my corner the whole year and, uh, you know, just listening to her. And she was going through her own stuff, you know, with, with my nephew and going through his court case and everything. But, you know, God bless her because she she was my rock last year. And you know what? You're right. It is not something that stops. It, it's something that you manage and it does get better. But there are going to be times when oh, yeah. the slightest thing will send you to a thought from the past and you'll feel some type of way. I mean, that's just the a way it is. A smell, a mm -hmm. picture, uh, a song, a uh, commercial, yeah, you know, little things. Yeah, Ex exactly. And, um, but, those all, but those things also make me smile when I think about her. So. Now, this next one. I had to laugh when uh, I saw it. It said, apply calming oils. And the first thing I thought of was <laughs> CBD oil. <laughs> hey! I, not something I've done, but, you know, hey, what works for one may not work for Apply another. it! Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Make a cup of tea. Uh, Can you put vodka in it? Or something strong of that nature, yeah. Yeah, I can't get with the T one. I mean, if it just said drink something, then yeah, then I could apply it because well, tea's not my go-to. Hot, hot beverages are supposed to be soothing, so I could see that working for some people. Oh. And plus, they do have they do have teas that make you sleepy. They have teas that you know. There's all sorts of. So yeah, I could see it working. Yeah, I guess I can see tea having that calming effect. Um, the next one is give someone a hug. That one works. Hugs, you know, all kidding aside, especially not just a random person hug. You no, get a hug from a loved one, and it, it, it just kind of makes you, even if it's temporary, it kind of makes you feel good or makes you feel better. See, that was the difference in what you said. You said when you get a hug. Yeah. Not give. Well, that's the thing. It's because when I'm article, anxious, it said in the article, when I'm anxious, give. yeah. When I'm anxious, I'm not giving anything. When I, I'm I agree. Off, I'm not giving because that's the but last thing you want to think of. But someone that loves you and sees your struggle and comes up to you and does that, yes, that is very helpful and soothing. Yeah. Um, take a brisk walk. That does work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just need to calm down, walk away. That's part of that walking away thing. Yeah, Go most definitely. Um, take a warm bath. I'm not a bath guy. I'm a shower guy. But I can see it working the same. Yeah, I think with the with the bath, you have those soothing, you know, soaps and things that would help too, I think. But I'm with you. I'm a shower dude. Yeah, Um. Oh, here's a good one. Watch an uplifting YouTube video. Shameless self-promotion. Watch more of these podcast episodes. And if you have to watch something... Uh, Man, there was one slightly warped that really helped you out. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> if, if you have to watch something else, there's a, a 
channel called Graybeard. Check it out. <laughs> I, I hear he's Shameless got plenty plug. of information. Um, this one I, I don't know about. Visualize your favorite place. I mean, I'd rather be there instead of just visualize it. But sure, okay. I mean, I think that goes hand like with those pictures. Same yeah, type of deal. I can see that. Dance to your favorite song. Yeah. When you dance, that releases endorphins. So, yeah, that helps. How about doing some yoga or other uh, physical activity? That does help. Exercise. Yeah. Um, I know when I was going to the dojo steady, if I had a bad day and I was going to class, I always thought to my mind, I feel sorry for my uke tonight because I am getting out my frustrations this evening. <laughs> yeah, and I can see that. I mean, even if, if, if I'm just, you know, my mind is on something too much, when I go for that run, it sort of does take my mind off of it. Sometimes, sometimes I'll go for the run just so that I can contemplate on the issue because it helps me, you know, figure out a solution for it. And sometimes when I don't want to think about it, it's a different kind of run. I'll run farther or harder so that I force myself to concentrate on the run itself. So it, it has an impact both ways. I um, see that. Lastly, this one was funny. Hold an ice cube. Don't know where they were going with that. I'm assuming that the cold is going to distract you and the ice cube melting in your hand is definitely going to distract you. That's an interesting one. Never done that. Not that I want to put myself in a stressful situation, but something to think about next time and I'll see if that really works or if I just yeah. end up with a wet, cold hand. Probably both. Probably. That's all they had on that list. So again, if any of you guys out there have a calming strategy, not just for anger, but for anxiety, anything that would trouble you, share with us something that you do. And we'd appreciate that. You can either um, leave a comment on YouTube or email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. And, uh, and I would, I would say, I would like to hear from the guys on this because as men, we don't have a whole lot of outlets for when we get stressed out or have anxiety, you know, that type of stuff. We're just supposed to deal with it. Women normally have women friends that help them guide them through their things. You know, some men are lucky enough to have women that do that for them. Um, but you know, even then there's only so much that you're going to share because you don't want to look or appear to be weaker than you are, you know? Yeah. It's that it's that it's that mindset that we were raised with, you know. Suck it up, cry and get the job done. Yeah, and stress, anxiety, anger, whatever, they're not weaknesses. That's just part of life. Don't think of yourself as weak, no matter what you're going through. If easier it's said than done. Get help, get help. But you know, I know it's easier said than done. It really is. But um, just stay strong, stay with it, because it, I've never met an experience that does not get better one way or the other. True, true. I agree. All right, show you got anything else for us today before we get out? No, not not particularly. Well, tell you what I'm going to do. In these couple minutes that we have left, I'm gonna turn do the have, tables. You do have. I what? do have. Well, I, I I do have my joke of the week. Oh, okay. Well, let's hear that. Now, I'm. Uh, this is a disclaimer. Okay. Because what is the name of this podcast? Slightly warped. So here is my warped joke of the week. All right. What do cannibals do after they eat their vegetables? Let me think this. What do cannibals do after? 
I don't know. They sell the wheelchairs on eBay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Told you it was a warped joke of the day. That that was warped, but hey, <laughs> not gonna lie, it was funny. And and y'all people saying that was so tasteless. No, you laughed too. That's right. And if you didn't laugh, I don't care. Take one of those things that we just did that just made you upset or anxious. Try it and see if it works. Comment below. Let us know. See, I'm here to help you out. There it is. All right. This has been the Slightly Warped Podcast for this week. We'll be back next week. We're always going to be in your face talking about something. And uh, we appreciate each and every one of you guys out there. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. Show, take us on out of here. Love yourself. Love each other. Hug everybody. Tomorrow's not promise. See you next week. Positive statement.